Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's grade six practice problems reviews on unit five, lesson nine, using the partial quotients method. Now, we've done the partial products method, and so partial quotients will be very similar. Now, here's one way to find 2,105 divided by, well, five, using partial quotients. Show a different way. Well, let's figure out what they did first. They looked at 2,105, and they said, well, five. What if I take 400? Five times 400 is 2,000. What does that leave me with? 105. Okay. Well, 5 with 105, that's about 20 times. Well, 5 times 20 is 100. That leaves me with 5. Well, that's going to give me one of those. And so subtracting, you get 0. So 421 is a solution. Something similar here. Okay. Well, let's take, try to write the number. 2,105, there we go, and divide it by 5. Well, let's say we accidentally said, I only think that it can go into 21, say, 3 times, or 300 times. Well, 5 times 300 is 1,500, and that leaves me now with 605 left. Well, I'm going to need to go in at least 100 more times here. 5 times 100 is 500, which leaves me with 105. Well, 5 with the 105 goes in, let's just call it 20 times again. Subtracting away 100. And now I have the 5, and so I have 1 times. Subtract 5 and get 0. And so now, you look at this and go, okay, I have 300 plus 100 is 400 plus 20 is 420 plus 1 is a solution here of 421. So a little bit different where we took the 300 and 100 instead of 400. So just a little different. Now, Andre and Jada both found 657 divided by 3 using the partial quotients method, but they did their calculations, or the calculations, differently as shown here. Looks like Andre and Jada, how is Jada's work similar to and different from Andre's work? Let's break this down. For the similarities, Andre and Jada both subtracted multiples of 3 several times. We have... 200 groups of 3, you have 10 groups of 3, you have 9 groups of 3. In Jada's, you have 50 groups of 3 for the 150, 100 groups of 3 for the 300, 60 groups of 3 for the 180, 9 groups of 3 for the 27. They both got down to 0 and had a quotient here of 219. As for the differences, Jada subtracted multiples of 3 more times than Andre, and these multiples were different. I mean, so you had 600 for Andre. Well, there's 150 and 300 and 180 and 27. I mean, they both had the 27 there, but the path there was much different, where Andre recognized the 200 groups to get 60, 10 to get 30, uh, before ending up with the 9 groups, compared to Jada, who got there eventually, did 50, then 100, then 60, um, so a little bit different method there. Now, why are they the same? They both subtracted multiples of 3 until there was no remainder, and they did so correctly. I mean, they took different paths, but they did it correctly. Now, which way might be better to evaluate 1,150 divided by 46, drawing base 10 diagrams or using the partial quotients method? Explain your reasoning. Now, my reasoning is going to be the partial quotients method working better. Uh, dividing these into equal groups by drawing is going to take a long time uh, compared to just using the partial quotients method where it won't be as long to get there. Here's an incomplete calculation of 534 divided by 6. 
Write the missing numbers marked with question mark that would make the calculation complete. Well, here we have the 80 groups of 6, which is 480 being subtracted away, which leaves us with 54. Then we had 9 groups of 6, which is 54. And we ended up with 0. And now we get to do this ourselves. Use the partial quotients method to find 1032 divided by 43. Yeah. Let's write our 1032. We're going to divide by 43. And the thing is, there are no, um, there is no one way you have to do this. And so if we were to look at the 43 and say, okay, how many multiples, how many times can I get this into uh, 1,032? I mean, even if you just, you know, start with 20. If it goes in 20 times, that gets you 860. 20 times 43 is 860. When I subtract that, 2. Write this kind of small here so we don't completely change the number. Uh, 13 minus 6 is 7. 9 minus 8 is 1, so 172. And then you go, okay, well, 1 can go in more than once. It can go in more than twice. It can go in more than 3. You can try 4 times. Well, 4 times 43 is exactly 172 which gets us our remainder of zero. And so now that I have the remainder of zero, I can look at these and go, okay, 20 plus four is 24, which is my solution. Which of the polygons, now in a review question, has the greatest area? Let's look at A. Rectangles can be found by taking the length times the width, and so three, and 25 hundredths times 6 and a tenth. This is 19 and 825 thousandths square inches. B, a square with a side length of 4 and 6 tenths inches. Well, side squared or side times side or length times width. 4 and 6 tenths times 4 and 6 tenths is going to be 21 and 16 hundredths square inches. In C, parallelogram. Well, area equals base times height for parallelograms. So we're looking at 5 and 875 thousandths multiplied by 3 and 5 tenths. And when you multiply those two numbers together, you get 20 and 5,625 ten thousandths square inches. And we look at D, a triangle with a base of 1 and 18 hundredths inches and a height of 5 and 4 tenths inches. Now area is equal to 1 half times the base of 7 and 18 hundredths times the height of 5 and 4 tenths. And when you multiply those three numbers together this time, you get a solution of 19 and 386 thousandths square inches. Now, which of these appears to be bigger? That would happen to be B, a square with side length four and six tenths inches. One micrometer is a millionth of a meter. A certain spider web is four micrometers thick. A fiber in a shirt is one hundred thousandth of a meter thick. Which is wider, the spider web or the fiber? And explain your reasoning. And then two, how many meters wider? Let's look at this one hundred thousandth of a meter thick. Well, if we have tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths, hundred thousandths, our next place is going to be millionths. And so 
one hundred thousandth is really ten millionths of a meter. And so that's the fiber in the shirt. Our spider web is four micrometers thick, which is four millionths of a meter. And so which happens to be bigger and wider? The fiber. By how much? Well, subtract 10 minus 4, and it's 6 millionths of a meter wider. That's it for this Grade 6 Practice Problems Review on Unit 5, Lesson 9, Using the Partial Quotients Method. Good luck.